Our, our religious heritage is rooted in the regrettable experience of slavery. You used to be enslaved. It was the blacks that sold other blacks to the Arabs over in Africa, mummy Africa, now, treated cruelly for that reason. Now you're, 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 blaming, you're blaming the victim. I would say the trauma caused by the um, George Floyd situation. You were traumatized by that? Absolutely. Are you so, grown or are you a baby? I think I'm a pretty grown man. How are you going to be traumatized by something like that? Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to be watching Jesse Lee Peterson dismantling the victim mentality of some of his fellow African Americans Americans by asking them a few pretty simple questions and also just making fun of them, which we love. So I think you guys will enjoy this one. Obviously, Jesse is absolutely hilarious, but we're also going to go into more context about the things that he's talking about. So with that, let's get into the first bit. You are an expert in African-American religious thought and history, right? You know, I'm trying to be. Let me say I'm trying to be. What now, is that? Huh? What is that? African-American religious history. Yeah, yeah. African-American religion, religious history. Thoughts and history. What yeah, is that? Well, it, yeah, it's it's a it's a study it's a study of our heritage, our our religious heritage, uh, even even beginning with our current our religious uh, stance and dispositions, uh, but but tracing it back through history, we try to discover our roots for the particular understandings of God, Christ, and, and the Bible uh, that we bring in our current religious experience. Is African-American re religious thought different from Caucasian religious thought? Oh, yes, very, very definitely. Yes. In what way? Well, for, for one thing, our, our religious heritage is rooted in the regrettable experience of slavery. You used to be a slave? Yes, we used to be slaves. You were a slave at one time. No, I was not. A, I know I was never. I was. I was born. I was born in the 1950s. So that, so, oh. so slavery was was long gone. Right. By then. But I still experience the legacy of slavery. How? And the in legacy what way? Of discrimination. In what way? I when I experience barriers that exist simply because of the color of of my skin. Those barriers are still real and they still exist. So how did you get to a, a APU and do all that, be the dean <clears throat> and do all that if Barry was in your way? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's amazing, isn't it? That's, it's a miracle, that's a miracle. Is it possible because they were not there? At least not from the white folks? That, that who was not there? The barriers were not there. It was all in your mind, it's not real. Oh no, the barriers were there. The barriers are, the barriers are there even now. Even now, even, even though I am associate dean and professor of New Testament, yeah, there, there's still some real barriers that you, that you deal with. When will black people know that they are not there anymore? What do white people have to do to say, okay, blacks, we gave, gave y'all everything. Do you want the land? You want the land there and you'll be done? You know, we'll, we'll know that these barriers are no longer there when we finally become fully human. And how are you going to do that by taking... In the eyes... But the eyes of what? In the eyes of, of white people. So if white people just say to the black, y'all human, would you be satisfied? No, it takes more than that. It takes more than that. What else you want? For one, thi for one thing, it takes, it takes getting the knees off of our necks. What, what do you thing. mean by that? Uh, what, I, what, I, what I mean by that is the, the end of things like uh, racialized police brutality, when those, when those kind of things uh, disappear. When, when, a, when a young woman uh, can be sitting in her house and not worry about police officers Who, busting the door down that? And, and shooting her to death. Who are you referring to? Breonna Taylor. Oh, that Taylor girl, uh, did you know she was dealing with drug Floyd. dealers? And, it, do, it doesn't matter what people you say know she, that was she was It doesn't matter it doesn't what, she, matter. You know, what she was dealing with. It doesn't matter nobody, that she nobody, rented a car nobody, where a murder or Nobody is going to walk into the house of a white woman and shoot her dead. They didn't do that. They didn't do what? They knocked before they went in. The boyfriend or maybe even her shot at the cops. No. They didn't just walk in. No, they busted the door down. No, but they didn't they, just walk in. It was a knock and they, then they went They in. did not identify themselves as police that's officers. Not true. The, young, the young man thought no, that's that some true. other group was breaking in. He shot in self defense. You mean the drug dealer? They returned fire when you and said they killed man. an innocent woman. When you say the young man, are you referring to the drug dealer that you were with? No, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm referring to a boyfriend. It, I, don't know, I don't know anything about his background. All I, all I know is, is that there's no justification for the string of killings of black men and black women for 
He, no reason. So this is the pervasive narrative amongst your race hustling circles. And they never get pushback if they stay in their liberal echo chambers and they never talk to conservatives, which they don't really. So he thinks that just saying things like there are barriers and get your knees off our neck is actually irrefutable. And whilst there are barriers, it's not the case that white people have the knee on the neck of African Americans and they all just want to hold them down and are all secretly just trying to oppress them. And if you wanted to get to the bottom of this, it would require a much deeper conversation, but from one side, there would have to be some accountability for cultural issues. I mean, it may not sound good to say this, guys, but having spent time in America and a fair bit of time and researched a fair bit of history about the country, it's safe to say that there are some deeply troubling cultural issues within the modern African-American community. I mean, you just have to look at the economic progress that they were making in the 40s and 50s and 60s and all of the musical genius that was coming out of Black America at that time. I mean, Aretha Franklin... <laughs> Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong, Muddy Waters, Nina Simone, Billie Holiday, Miles Davis, Ray Charles. Sam Cooke, Little Richard, Marvin Gaye, B.B. King, Otis Redding, Chuck Berry. John Coltrane, Nat King Cole, and the list goes on. And then you look at today, Ice Spice. Little Sexy Red. My coochie pink, my booty hole brown. And there are obviously many different reasons for this, but this is a disastrous regression of culture. And there's a quote by Confucius that says, if one should desire to know whether a kingdom is well governed, if its morals are good or bad, the quality of its music will furnish the answer. Furthermore, Plato said music is the movement of sound to reach the soul for the education of its virtue. So if you look at a culture whose virtues are being educated by Ice Spice and the Little Red, then let's just say that can't be good. And obviously there are some great African-American artists still out there. You look at guys like Killer Mike, Black Thought, J. Cole. Mentally we let this poison a Western philosophy make us sloppy. We forgot we are the chosen. And others, but unfortunately, the aforementioned ladies. Good, that's why I stay pregnant. If you want to call them that are much more popular. So anyways, he mentioned Breonna Taylor there, and he said that she was shot for no reason by a white police officer, and this would never happen to a white woman. Well, I think the truth is that you would just never hear about it if it did. And it has happened. Here's a story of a lady named Justine Damon, who was killed by a black police officer for literally no reason. And this happened, by the way, in Minneapolis in 2017, a few years before George Floyd was killed in the exact same city but the reaction was a little bit different from the public. In the summer of 2017, Justine Damon Ruzchek was shot dead in an alley behind her Minneapolis home. Muhammad Noor was the attending officer who pulled the trigger. Now, nobody paid attention to this, and we could have made it a big deal. We could have said that it was a big race issue. We could have taken to the streets and marched and said, this black police officer killed this white woman and it was racist. But that would be ridiculous because it was clearly not a matter of race. And furthermore, if you did look at crime statistics in the United States, objectively, you would not just be wrong about the fact that blacks are being targeted unfairly. You could make a very strong case that the opposite is actually happening. Black on white crime is way, way more common than white on black crime. And then there's also the issue of black on black crime. And if it is really black lives that you are so worried about, then why are you not fighting tooth and nail every single day, every waking hour to stop the gang violence in inner cities in America. So let's quickly have a listen to Larry Elder discussing these issues on the PBD podcast before we move on. There's a website called policemag.com. This is important. People who were self-described as very liberal were asked, how many unarmed black men did the police kill in 2019? One half of, uh, of the self-described very liberal people, 50% of them thought the police killed 1,000 unarmed black men in 2019. 8% thought they killed 10,000. What? Uh, of those yeah. who were self-described as liberal, 39% thought they killed 1,000. 5% thought they killed 10,000. According to the Washington Post database, it was 12. 12 was the That's the yeah. gap between what people think is going on versus what is going on. That's what happens to your mentality. To be fair, not 12,000 or 1,200, 12. 12. Well, yeah. 12. Well, Washington Post database. Uh -huh. 
And in fact, the police kill more unarmed white people every year than they kill unarmed blacks. And there are video of the police mishandling, manhandling, mistreating unarmed white people. Nobody cares. Most homicide is same race homicide. Most whites who are killed are killed by other whites. Most blacks who are killed are killed by other blacks. However, every year there are a handful of black white homicides out of the say 20,000 homicides, about 750 of them are black, white, white, black. 500 white people are killed by blacks, even though blacks are just 13% of the population. 250 blacks are killed by whites, even though whites are 60% of the population. So blacks are killing twice as many uh, whites as the other way around. Most people have no idea about that stat. Just before we move on, guys, don't forget to quickly smash that like button for me if you're obviously enjoying this content. And also, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, smash that big red button. Let's get back into it. Even, if, the, the even, out, even if they're drug dealers, pushing drugs, criminals, and all that, well, they don't bring well, that up on okay, themselves. Okay, our, as our, a our, preacher, as a preacher, hold on. Do they bring that up on themselves by the way they live? Well, white people seem to escape that's that. That's not what I'm asking you. you know, and they, they and, and there, are, there, are, there are white drug dealers, there are white gang members, Do they but yet it? you don't hear of killing after killing after killing of unarmed, unarmed that, black men and black women. That's not true. It is true. No, it just I mean, that's, I mean that, that is the problem. That is what all the protests but are about. The protests ask. are not about police engagement with criminals. As a preacher, protests, I gotta ask you this. Okay. As a preacher, called by God, sitting in the room, read the, read the word when God called you. As a preacher, does it matter their lifestyle? Can they possibly bring this upon themselves by the way they live? Lifestyle does not bring murder upon someone. If you're a drug dealer or you're involved in drug dealing and you're doing criminal things, can you bring that upon yourself? A, a, a lifestyle can lead to consequences. So is it possible to tell a woman and whoever, Floyd or whatever his name was, brought that upon himself based on their lifestyle? Is that possible? No, not, not, not under, these, under these circumstances. It was racism that brought that, 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 that consequence upon her. Do you, believe, do you believe that white people discriminate against blacks? Yes. Do you discriminate? No. You never discriminate? No. You don't discriminate? I don't, I don't discriminate against anyone on the basis of race. Do you discriminate? I have been discriminated against on the basis of race. So you do discriminate? Everybody discriminates. How about for, you? For, for example, you? I prefer to eat chicken rather than pork. That's discrimination. Do you discriminate? Not on the basis of race. Do you discriminate uh, against other people? Not, no, not, so on, the you, not, on, you not on the basis of racial characteristics. That's, that's what we're so talking about. So why did you marry a black woman instead of a white woman? Because I fell in love with her. But why do you fall in love with a white woman? You discriminated. No, I fell, yeah, in, lo I fell in love you, you with my wife. You dated a white woman before, right? No, I never dated a white Why woman. Why not? Uh, I, that, that situation just never arose. Because you discriminated. I fell in love with somebody else. Is being a white Christian different from being a black Christian? Yes. In what way? Heritage. What? Heritage and experience. And what do you mean by that? Black, black people, even black Christians, have experienced a racial heritage and history in this country that white people have not experienced. In fact, white people have been responsible for black what people does that have experiencing to be, what this does history that have to be, and heritage. What does that have to do with being born of God? It has nothing to, be, to do with being born of God, because black people who are Christians are born of God also. But yet, despite the fact that they were Christian and born of God, they have been treated as subhumans. I agree with you that the Arab, the Arab did treat them that way because it's the black that sold Arab. them. No, I'm, the, no, it was I'm, the I'm, black I'm, that I'm, sold the Arab. I'm talking about racial history in I, the Americas. It was the black that sold the Arab. I mean, it was the black that sold other blacks to the Arabs over in Africa, mummy Africa. No, and no, then they went and, and the Arabs sold the blacks around the world. I do agree with that. So they were treated cruelly for that reason. Now you're, 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 blaming, you're blaming the victim. The, le the legacy... How the Arabs the, the, legacy, the legacy... Who were the victims? Of, the Arabs that, sold, that bought them or the blacks no, that no, sold chattel, them? Chattel slavery and the Middle Passage are the responsibility of European and European Americans. What the... There were black people who owned slaves here in this country. No, there were no, no, yes, no, there no, were. no, no black people did not, not own slaves. Now, now so they, you're really saying that a white Christian is different than a black Christian. 
yes, I mean, Christianity does not occur in a cultural vacuum. All, all Christian expressions are cultural expressions of Christianity. There's no such thing as, as, as an absolute value neutral, culturally neutral Christianity. That, that, that is a myth. Uh, if, if you find that's a cult amazing. So you know that somebody's made a great point when Jesse Lee Peterson says, that's amazing. I mean, all cultures are different, yes, but you'd have to find me the place in the Bible where it says that black Christians and white Christians are different, better, worse, whatever. Galatians 3.28 says, there is no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, you are all one in Jesus Christ. But I think that this guy is a perfect example of a race hustler, somebody who benefits in his academic career from seeing absolutely everything through the prism of race. And I'm not even somebody who subscribes to the whole colorblindness thing. I think that's kind of silly. Race and culture matters. And this is one of the big problems with multiculturalism. And this is why I think that multiculturalism is the reason why we can't get away from these conversations. Because when you have such a diverse society, people's differences are going to become more and more pronounced. And cultural differences and how we navigate that in the modern world is a conversation that needs to happen. But I mean, these people see everything through race and it's just tiring. And now to the next part where Jesse talks to a different activist. This one about George Floyd and how this guy is very traumatized. George Floyd, mm -hmm. you know that unemployed drug addict? Oh, wow. With sure. the criminal record? Sure. Were you surprised when the blacks blamed the cop rather than blaming the unemployed drug addict for his death? Were you surprised when the blacks did that? Do you believe no, I don't see a problem with that. I'm answering your question first. Okay. Yeah, do, were you no. surprised when Wait, hold the on blacks really quickly. pretended that it was the cops' problem instead of, uh, I mean, the cops' fault that George Floyd is dead, when George Floyd was an unemployed drug addict with a criminal record? So do you were think... Were you surprised at the blacks' reaction to that? Well, do you think that an unemployed drug addict do you think that because he was unemployed and, and addicted to drugs, which I'm not even sure he was addicted to drugs, but whatever, but do you think because he was unemployed, and let's assume addicted to drugs, that that somehow in and of itself resulted in the compression on his neck that denied his brain oxygen? You didn't answer my question. I am answering it. No, I asked you a question. Or I asked you, were you surprised at the reaction of the blacks when the unemployed drug addict with the criminal record... <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Man, you really hate yourself in some ways, but was, it's true. So no, I'm was, not surprised. Were you surprised that the blacks blamed the cop and mm -hmm. not the addict? I am not surprised that the cops blame, the, that the black people, or not just black people, obviously a jury of his peers found it who were not black. Obviously coroners were not black in this scenario. I'm not surprised that the vast majority of sane people were able to recognize that the suppression, of, uh, the, the suppression on his neck resulted in a lack of oxygen, which ultimately caused his death. Both an independent coroner and the other coroner both found this to be true. So no, I would not be surprised that people who were, had access to the actual information released by the coroner were able able to identify that this cop's action by putting his knee on his neck for that amount of time resulted in his death. So no, that's so not surprising saying, at all. you're saying, no, Jesse, I'm not surprised at the blacks blaming the cops rather than the unemployed drug addict with the record, with criminal record. I, I, if saying, that's what no, you took Jesse, from that, but let me ask you this, I'm do asking, you blame no, the I coroner? Wanna be, I want to be clear, you're not I know, I question. answer the question are very you, directly. Are you saying yes, no, Jess, I'm not surprised at the reaction of the blacks. I think I answered it with some, ex with some additional information. But I, you didn't, I didn't hear yes okay, or no. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, I'll say it one more time. Let me fully answer it. No, I'm not surprised. Oh, okay. that, that, hold on. No, All I'm not right. surprised. All right. no, I, got I got you. No, I'm not no. surprised, especially considering the information from the coroner clearly demonstrated that the suppression on his neck was caused by the officer, which resulted in his death. Do you think that a person being unemployed and crack, it, crack and, and, I'm sorry, and addicted to drugs would somehow result in compression in their neck, denying their brain oxygen? I think that he get what he deserved. He doesn't care about his oh. own life. Jesse. If he had cared about, cared about his own life, he would not have been a drug addict and a criminal record. So do you believe because... Am I right about that? I, I, I totally first agree. Of all, I, it, yes, I do agree. I think that a person who values their life would probably not be addicted to drugs or have criminal records. And secondly, but would if you his say, knee wasn't on the neck... Would you... Okay. Did, did the knee... Where, where the knee was placed... Near did the neck, it, but not on the neck. Sure. Where it was placed, did it result in the, like, in the cessation of oxygen, of required oxygen to his no. brain that resulted... So you disagree with the coroner? Yes. Oh, okay. So what, did you go to medical school? How'd you, where'd you get this information? I went to common sense school. 
Oh, so common sense says that a coroner would just lie and make up that compression no, on the neck. No, the people around him lied and made it up. But the coroner but let himself me do this said it. because of time. Okay, gotcha. So considering that this happened a few years ago, Jesse's intuition was pretty on point here, and it actually just goes to show that the school of common sense can actually be far more effective than a real school. Now, if you're familiar with the case, you'll know that George Floyd had a lethal dose of fentanyl in his system. But I mean, even if you do grant the consensus at the time and you say it was a knee on the neck and that is conclusively what killed him and Derek Chauvin received the right sentence, you would still have to explain to me how this is a race issue. At any point, did this cop say something racist or even race related? Does he have a history of being racist or previous run-ins? And I mean actual racism, not just other run-ins with black people. What is the evidence that this was in any way racially motivated? And why is this something that should be making black people feel unsafe or targeted? Onto the last bit. We're yeah, I don't want to argue about that. You're right, you're right. Because time been going by really past here. You're right. Um, you said, if I'm, it's been written here that you said you didn't want to pick up food because you would have to drive through wealthy neighborhoods and you thought the cops were going to pull you over. You said if I could put on a white skin for 30 minutes mm -hmm. while I go make food run, make food run, I would do it and I wouldn't feel nervous anymore. Did you for say sure. that? For sure, for sure. Why would you say something like that? Well, um, I happen to live in a, a, pretty, a pretty nice neighborhood. Um, it's like super duper predominantly white. Um, it's you on, say you live in a neighborhood like sure, that? Sure, it's on the rich, rich side of town. And I think in the middle of all of the unrest, I would say the trauma caused by the um, George Floyd situation. You were traumatized by that? Absolutely. How old are you? I'm 37 now. And you were traumatized by George Floyd thing? For sure. What the? Do you not? Do, well, I, I know you're not a psychologist. So, yeah, I get it. I know you probably what struggle the? with psychology. But sure, so I would say that why, and it wasn't just that one in and of Are you itself. grown or are you a baby? I think I'm a pretty grown man. How are you going to be traumatized by something like that? Do you think grown men can't be traumatized? No. Oh, they okay. can if they're in a fallen state, but... Oh, you have to be in a fallen state. But go ahead, explain yeah, why. Yeah, basically, so what it was is I live in a pretty rich neighborhood, and, and ultimately I recognized that, like, if you... I saw the, the circumstances around not just George Floyd, but then the surrounding events as well, and all of the other people, Ahmaud Arbery and so on and so forth, and the lack of accountability for cops gave me pause to consider the fact that if I am driving... At the time, I was driving a much worse car than I am now, and I felt somewhat uncomfortable with the idea that, man, me in this car, in this neighborhood will stick out like a, black, like, like a sore thumb, and I can imagine police officers wanting to give me specific attention being a black man in this neighborhood in this car. And so that gave me a little bit of pause and made me feel somewhat a, 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 a tinge of trepidation. Ooh. Ultimately, I would go get the food, but it, I think I, that sort of that sort of thing, I'm a very risk averse person. Amazing. And I, and I would say so that So why don't you move nervous. out of your little rich white neighborhood? Why should I? But you're afraid of the whites. No, no, I'm not afraid of the whites. What is it? I'm sorry. I, I don't know how you got that You've from what traumatized. I said. You've been traumatized. Do you think that the trauma so would disappear if I was in a black neighborhood? how do you travel around in your white neighborhood I drive in knowing that the cops may drive up behind you? What are you doing over here, boss? I've adjusted and I drive around with faith in God that I will be protected and that's how I live my life. Oh, amazing. So this was too funny to watch. and I'm surprised Jesse didn't come out with a big old beta. beta. But what's particularly funny about this is that Jesse Lee Peterson actually grew up during the Jim Crow era in Alabama, and he actually used to be a cotton picker. And some of you guys will know that I've been on his show a few times, and last time I was there, he actually showed me his cotton picking sack when we were live on air in his office. But it fell on deaf ears, Jesse. <laughs> what a mess. You see my cotton sack? What is it? That's when I used to pick cotton. <laughs> <laughs> is it actually? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is cool. You never picked cotton before? No. Does that make you a, a victim? <laughs> no, it make me a cotton picker. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever sing songs while you were picking cotton? Yes. Like the Midnight Special. <laughs> Shine a light on me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I used to say some glad morning when this life is, life is over. <laughs> So the fact of the matter here, guys, is that, and this goes for all people, history has been very ugly. And if you're trying to get oppression points in the modern world, very comfortable modern world, due to the suffering of your ancestors, even though you never went through that yourself, then that's not okay. But this is the kind of divisive narrative that the far leftists and the media will push down our throats these days. It's the idea that white people are evil, 
people of color are victims and that white people throughout history have been the big oppressors. And that now in the modern world, there needs to be some sort of reparations, financial reparations, cultural reparations, apologies. But this is obviously not a solutions-based approach. And the only people who are actually looking at solutions-based approaches like Larry Elder, Candace Owens, Jesse Lee Peterson, rebuilding the family, getting fathers back in the home and actually impacting culture get shunned. So with that, guys, that's it for me today. If you would like to find me, you can hit those links below. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, right here. And if you'd like to watch another video, right here. Till next time, I'm Jake. This is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.